Been playing a little bit of that um, Elden Ring. Maybe you heard of it. Um, Game of the Generations, guys. That's how freaking good it is. And I had an absolute blast. I put about 120 hours in it. I went through most of New Game Plus. Um, fun as shit, man. Immensely fun. And um, what really, I think, separates this from um, so the other Dark Souls is they've taken all of the stuff from Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Sekiro, and they've kind of just stacked it in and improved on, on as far as combat. And, and so you've got now so many goodies. The amount of goodies and weapons and ashes and summons and stuff, it, it just cannot be denied. And there's like hundreds of weapons and I don't know how many ashes. There's just so many toys and goodies and um, equipments and all of these thingies, things to get. And what they've done is they've taken um, a pretty good size open world I didn't I thought that they were just going to have basically like a hub kind of like you know Ocarina of Time or something where you know your classic uh, Dark Souls dungeons uh, it scattered around but no it's like a pretty good size open world and they filled it with so many of these toys and goodies that almost around every bend there's something new to get and that is really helped to um, just make it so you just feel like you're compelled you're compelled to just keep going out there and finding all of these treasures and toys and they'll often be toys that, you know, they're, you know, like you'll be a melee character and they'll be just wizard shit. But yes, I just still wanted it. I still wanted it, especially once you can, you know, respec. He's like, you know, if I want to turn the character I am right now into a wizard, then I have an entire set of wizard doohickey goodies. Or, um, you know, you don't know um, what the next, you know, super meta broken shit is. And you better collect everything. So you got well, at least one of everything. So when the new broken bullcrap build comes out on the internet, you can just pick it up and start whooping ass. Um, absolutely packed in with treasures the way I guess Breath of the Wild was or Skyrim, I mean not Skyrim but Morrowind, uh, just things around every band and I could not stop playing and searching for toys I had no real care for you know wherever the straight quest or story was, I just wanted to go out there and get all of the goodies and I normally do not have that experience when I play these like super giant games, I usually just main them but um, it's fun. It's fun, and there's so many things that I didn't even freaking know about. I didn't. I had no idea what power stance was. It's like basically you take two down, different kind of. Um, well, they, they need to be the same weapon type. So like two hellbirds or whatever it is, and then when you do a wield them, you got a brand new set of freaking moves on the left bumper. I'm like, wow, that's freaking awesome. Um, didn't, I played through the entire game a hundred hours, and I didn't even know that. I just found that out from some guy on the forums. I don't remember that being in Dark Souls 3. Hell, maybe I didn't. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. I don't know. But there's so many toys like that that you just want to experiment and play around. And uh, when you run into some asshole monster or whatever, your toys or your goodie set is what really helps you get through some of these monsters. Um, maybe you, can, you Margaret the Fell, it's gonna you know whoop your ass if you just take a beeline to him. Uh, but you come back, you know, 10 hours later when you're just loaded up with all the shit that Limgrave has and just whoop his ass. You're like, you got a big ass grin on your face. It's like, uh-huh, I see what it is. And the whole game's like that. And if you go out and just get every toy or goodie that's out there, um, you'll be over-leveled for the, uh, for the content of the game. And so even people who um, have not played Dark Souls before, this is a great entry point. If you're curious and want to play it, then by all means you should play this. Um, this still won't be a game for everyone. It's definitely not going to lay down. It's going to kill you bullshit. It's going to particularly um, introduce you to bottomless cliffs where you fall over. And you'll see from the other players who have their little blood stains of where that everybody's been falling off in this cliff. Um, you'll at least know about it as you plunge to your death, <laughs> presumably. Maybe you're in the cave and it's fucking dark in there and you've got your light around or whatever. But I could not stop playing it and um, even when I'm ready to play new games and I'm like I beat this game I'm gonna go away I can still find myself coming back um, I'll read the forums or something and some I'll hear something about something new it's like man I gotta try this weapon out and then I'll go and look it's, I might even have it in my inventory already and just you can just pick the weapon up you know upgrade it and ha have fun um, it's a very easy recommend to anybody who has been curious about these games who have not stepped on board before uh, but uh, it's a damn journey. Um, now, most people um, who stood away from the old, you know, Dark Souls and Bloodborne said, well, they were, they, one of the things I often heard was like, this game didn't value my time. I was like, that was really an excuse to not learn how to play. Um, it's cryptic. 
you gotta figure out what the fucking poise is. You gotta figure out what fat man roll is. You gotta figure out how your upgrade set is. This is distinctive Dark Souls stuff. Kind of stuff that's seeped through in other games these days, and you've probably encountered some of the mechanics, especially the bonfire mechanic, even if you have not played Dark Souls yet. Um, but it's a it's a, a learning curve, and I'd say it's around 10 hours, although um, for some people maybe more than that, to, to figure out what you need to do to, uh, to go through and actually be able to kill some of these super just seemingly impossible bosses and stuff that you run to at the beginning. Um, but once you got it, man, this game really grabs you in and, and you just cannot stop playing. But unlike, say, Dark Souls, which is like 30 hours, this this is a 100-hour little bastard, man. This one's going to take a hell of a long time. And if you distinctively hate games that are that involved um, or, um, you know, 100-hour freaking, you know, super fest, um, I mean, you can try to mainline it, but you're going to be facing the absolute, you know, most brutal damn freaking um dark souls -y bull crap game honestly it, it it seems like it could be brutal um but honestly i had about this i would say it's about the difficulty of uh dark souls one um dark souls three i think is the hardest game uh, for me to this day um but god dog it was so great and you're going to hear about this game talked about for years and years i would say it's roughly like a skyrim or maybe link to the to past uh equivalent where it's not like inventing the new wheel, but you know, now the wheels will hail a lot better, man. Um, and so, it's an easy um, paw up from Big Kitty, who actually fell in love with the freaking lore. The, even though the lore is very cryptic, just like normal, um, as a friend on the internet told me, he's like, has it got a bunch of damn um, naked waifus with no freaking, you know, no, you know, just their bare feet and they're just talking to riddles? Yeah, pretty much. Crazy ass shit like that. And then, um, you know, it's, uh, I, I kind of felt compelled. I wanted to know all about these crazy-ass peoples and stuff, and I'll probably have to look up a Wikipedia th th article at the end to figure this shit out, because I don't, I don't, I still don't really know. <laughs> but, uh, we get a Paul out from Big Kitty. Um, Brian was a little bit pissed off, because he had it on PC, and there was a couple weeks where you had some kind of shader caching problems or something. It's not super optimized for PC. Um, this is one of the first games I've seen where a VRR monitor, variable refresh monitor, or TV is going to be pretty damn important to get. Um, it, it helps smooth this out. Um, there's still been patching on the PC version, although I've heard that every every version does not just hit a stable 60 frames. So, not even PS5. Um, but Brian was compelled by the goodies. The freaking amount of treasures everywhere. There was a new treasure. Um, he, at the time, we was having to mark all of the vendors because they hadn't patched in the little um, vendors on the map yet. Um, so we had to mark every damn vendor to go because we, you know, you might need to go and buy something from again. There was no marking system. Or quest. There's some stuff out there that Brian doesn't like about the um, the quests. You need a fucking guide to, to do the quest. Um, they're not vital to uh, the game, but you're not going to be able to really finish the quest without a, a huge amount of effort. And more than likely, you're going to break the quest. If you're just out there just doing stuff, you, you'll move the story forward or um, the basic progress of monsters maybe too forward and, you know, the quest disappears. There's shit like that going on. Um, overall, it's not because you can just go and play a new game plus with all your shit and stuff. Um, I don't I don't feel like I was missing out on things like when I'm doing stuff like that. Uh, but this is an easy recommend. Likely, well, I'm an easy probably the, the game of this year and it might be just the game of the generation. I haven't had this much fun with a game since uh, Monster Hunter World, to be honest. And um, this is up there. This surpasses everything. All of the Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and Sekiro. It just, it's just way better than all of them. And uh, it's really rare for a game that is already hyped through the moon to actually surpass all people's hype. But that is what this is. Elden Ring. Uh, 